The NBA season is less than a month away, and in this video, I want to take a look at the players who will be in the running for the 2024 Defensive Player of the Year. This is a continuation of my previews for this upcoming season, and I think I'm going to jump back and forth between talking about teams and end of season awards. I don't have anything specifically laid out though, so as per usual, don't hold me to anything. But either way, let's talk about the Defensive Player of the Year award and the players I think stand the best chance at winning it. I think this award is going to be a seven-man race, and the seven candidates in question are the reigning Defensive Player of the Year Jaron Jackson Jr., Evan Mobley, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo, Brooke Lopez, and Nick Claxton. I'm going to start with the three who, in my opinion, are more fringe candidates. Their cases just aren't as strong as the four I really think this race will come down to, and those fringe candidates are Bam Adebayo, Brooke Lopez, and Nick Claxton. I'll get the quickest one out of the way first, which would probably be Brooke Lopez, the runner-up in last season's Defensive Player of the Year race. Lopez had likely the second best season of his career in 22-23, arguably his best because, I mean, it definitely was in terms of defensive impact. Lopez is one of the best interior defenders in the league, as well as an incredible rim protector and shot blocker. He was actually the NBA's block leader last season with 193 and averaged 2.5 a, a game. Brooke is also surprisingly good at switching out onto the perimeter and was a big part of the Bucks getting better at defending the three. Obviously he's not the quickest, but he's a true stretch five on both ends of the floor. And for the most part, I don't really expect a lot of that to change. I imagine he'll still be one of the best rim protectors in the NBA, and the Bucks will still have a well above league average defense, even with Drew Holiday no longer being on the team. Brooke Lopez is 35 however, and I don't think we'll be seeing him move quite like he did last season. He kind of turned back the clock a bit, but that's going to be increasingly harder to do, and as he loses a step, he'll be less effective guarding the perimeter. Also, and I'll speak about this later, but I think Giannis is primed for a season where he reminds everybody that, oh right, this dude is also one of the best defenders in the league, on top of a perennial MVP candidate. So I just don't think the cards are in order for Brooke. Still an amazing defender, but if he was to have won the award, I think last season was his best shot. Next up is Nick Claxton, who really flew under the radar last season, especially after Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving were officially off of the Nets. But this dude is special on defense, and I'm hoping this season will serve as an opportunity for some more light to shine on his game. Claxton is one of the most athletic bigs in the league and is super quick-footed at 6'11", making him elite as a defender basically everywhere on the court. I think the label of a player who can guard 1-5 through five gets thrown around way more often than it's actually applicable, and in my opinion, it's someone who can guard every position not just for a single possession, but for genuine stretches of a game, and Nick Claxton is either in that category or about as close as you can get without actually being in it. He's also a good rebounder, an excellent shot blocker, and it doesn't matter in the case for being Defensive Player of the Year, but he had the highest field goal percentage in the entire league last season. The reason why Claxton is more of a fringe candidate is because of the other defenders on the Nets. There's some pretty strong personnel in that department, like Mikael Bridges, who has also been a Defensive Player of the Year finalist, Cam Johnson, and Ben Simmons, who's been claiming to feel better than he has since his heydays in Philly. And whether I believe that or not is neither here nor there, but given everything he said, I'd expect him to play at least more than 40 games. And you might think this is reductive, but not a lot of people are going to be watching the Nets this season, so there will be pretty limited opportunities for Claxton to shut down one of the league's best players on a primetime network game, and it's moments like those that play heavily into the narratives around awards, so I just don't think a whole lot of people will really be keeping him in consideration. And the last of the fringe candidates is Bam Adebayo, which might surprise some of you. Bam is one of the best defenders on a competitive big market team, but I'm just not sold on this case this season. It doesn't really have anything to do with his play, so you're not going to be hearing any scorching hot takes from me on this one. Bam is, in fact, another player who actually does deserve to say he can guard 1-5, through five, and he has an extremely versatile skill set. He's not quite the shot-deterring presence that Lopez or Claxton are, but he has quicker and more active hands that can help cause turnovers and create steals. Bam is also great in drop coverage as well as navigating through screens and effectively switching. He defends dribble handoffs extremely well, and has overall been Miami's trusted defensive anchor. Despite all of this, Adebayo has been on the outside of this award looking in for the past several seasons, and I'm pretty confident that the majority of the growth he has left to do lies in the offensive side of his game. There isn't really much more you could ask Bam to do defensively, and yet his impact hasn't won in the award yet. Also, the Heat aren't looking too hot either. 
Having staked almost their entire offseason on acquiring Damian Lillard just to not get him, and then unsuccessfully bidding for Drew Holiday just days after, Miami hasn't made any moves that make him better, they've instead lost several key pieces, and with the team's overall success being so much in doubt, I feel pretty confident that Bam's defense isn't going to reverberate the same way it could if the team seemed like a serious contender. That might sound like a really ineffable reason to say he won't win the award, but listen, a lot of these awards are vibe based anyway, so I don't think I'll be that far off. And on to my top candidates for Defensive Player of the Year, let's start things off with Anthony Davis. AD had an incredible past season, for the most part. <laughs> Leave me alone! <laughs> ah! And with everything we've seen from him over the offseason, him saying that he feels healthy, he's ready to be the Lakers' true number one option, all this stuff, I think he might have a career year. AD is one of the best defenders in the league when healthy, and when he faced off against Jaron Jackson Jr. in the second round last season, he kinda sunned him. Anthony Davis' skills are super well known, so there isn't much value in restating that he's a generational rim protector, shot blocker, and overall interior presence. Also, AD is, again, truly a big that can switch out onto the perimeter and lock up an elite NBA guard. Also, the Lakers are loaded and will probably be really good. I think it's reasonable to expect them to be a top 5 or 6 team in the West during the regular season, and if AD can stay available through the vast majority of that, I do like his chances. Unfortunately, staying healthy is a lot easier said than done, and even though at media day he said his goal was to play all 82 games, I, uh, I just kinda f***ing doubt that. I'm not preying on this man's downfall or anything, and I'd love to see what an 82-game Ironman Anthony Davis season looks like, but until I do, I'm gonna bet on the odds that he does miss a bit of time, especially with the Lakers trying to compete for a ring. It would just be weird and counterintuitive to the process to have AD play more games than he's comfortable with when you're banking on his health for the playoffs. And not only does games played come up a lot in these conversations, but there's also now an official 65-game minimum for end-of-season awards, so we'll just have to see. Up next, let's talk about Evan Mobley and his chances to win the award. I've said it from the first time I mentioned the Cavs on my channel, but Evan Mobley is an all-time defensive prospect. It might sound weird to call a player heading into their third year a prospect, but he's only 22 and the level of impact he's had defensively in his rookie and sophomore seasons is truly generational. Like basically everyone I've talked about already, Mobley is an extremely versatile Swiss Army knife of a defender. I believe he led the league in three-pointers contested last season, as well as being like sixth in two-pointers contested. The Cavs have him running all over the floor, and while Jared Allen is more of the traditional anchor, what makes Cleveland such a tough defensive team is Mobley's ability to switch out and also provide help defense. He's basically the sole reason the Cavs can run two essentially six-foot guards as their backcourt and not have it get massively exploited. There really isn't anything Mobley can't do defensively, and he has a case for being the most versatile defender in the entire league. He benefits from having Jared Allen, an elite interior defender in his own right, covering the paint so he can roam, but I don't say that as a way of diminishing Mobley, I say it more as like a, wow the Cavs are a defensive nightmare for opponents. So I think if Cleveland moved up the ladder and was a top 3 seed in the East this season, which is very possible with the 76ers looking like a sinking ship, I think Evan Mobley has a serious shot at winning Defensive Player of the Year. Before I talk about the incumbent candidate Jaron Jackson Jr., let me talk about Giannis who I think will be re-entering into this conversation. Not that my analysis has necessarily gone super in-depth on any of these players, but Giannis is the one I probably need to do the least explanation on. He's obviously an all-time great in general, but as a defender, especially a weak side defender, Giannis is a monster. He's a beast in the paint, a hell of a rim protector, and there's basically no one that could get by him on the perimeter. I think what stopped Giannis from racking up several Defensive Player of the Year awards has, to a small extent, been due to his load management, but to a bigger extent, has to do with the fact that he's on a team that, over the past few years, has consistently been one of the best defenses in basketball. But coming out of the Damian Lillard trade, the Bucks now have a noticeable gap in their defensive personnel, and I think that'll be enough that Giannis is required to have an even larger impact on defense, particularly more than what he's needed to give since he last won the award, or more specifically, since Drew Holiday was a Buck. I think Giannis is going to build a super strong case for Defensive Player of the Year this coming season, and if the Bucks are at the top of the East, which is very very likely, then it's going to be hard to deny him the award. And lastly, the case for the reigning defensive player of the year, Jaron Jackson Jr. 
Jay to the power of three has been anchoring the Grizzlies' top seven to top three defense for several years now, but it really feels like last season was his breakout. He held opponents to just 46.9% at the rim, the best in the league, and led the NBA in blocks per game on his way to winning his first defensive player of the year. I do think Jaron Jackson Jr. is someone who will go on to be a two or three time defensive player of the year in his career, and at just 24, he could be a perennial top 10 defender for the next decade. With the addition of Marcus Smart over the offseason, Memphis's defense is going to be a pain in the ass for most of the league. It's hard to improve on the third best team defensive rating, but I would expect the Grizzlies to remain top three and maybe even push for one of the top two spots. I have some doubts about how successful they'll be during the regular season, having to deal with John Morant's 25 game suspension to start things off, but the Grizzlies have been the top two team in the West for two seasons straight, so I think it's fair to assume they can remain a top six seed, even while down a man. I am noticing that this factor is becoming increasingly less important as I go through the candidates because just about all of them are on teams that'll have good records next season. But regardless, even though I think this upcoming race for Defensive Player of the Year is going to be more competitive than it maybe was last season, I still think Jaron Jackson Jr. has one of the best chances to win the award and go back to back. So looking over everything I've set up until this point, I think the Defensive Player of the Year race is going to ultimately come down between Jaron Jackson Jr., Giannis, and Evan Mobley. I think the world of Mobley's potential, and I mean it's not even potential at this point, he was a top 3 DPOI candidate in year 2, however, to eliminate one right out of the gate, I don't think it'll be his time just yet. Evan Mobley should and probably will win multiple Defensive Player of the Year awards in his career, I just don't think he's quite enough of a household name yet, and I'm sorry to say, but there's no solidified criteria for this award, it is frequently narrative and feelings based. I mean Marcus Smart won the Defensive Player of the Year award, come on now. Anyways, between Jaron Jackson Jr. and Giannis, I think Giannis will be the 2024 Defensive Player of the Year. I feel like he's due for a bit of a resurgent season defensively, and I think his contributions relative to the rest of his teams will stand out a bit more than Jackson Jr.'s. I don't think Giannis will win more than another Defensive Player of the Year in his career, so I feel like this might be the best opportunity for him to win it again before the award gets passed around between Jaron Jackson Jr., Evan Mobley, and Victor Wembanyama for like the next 15 years. So that's my pick for Defensive Player of the Year. Let me know what you think. This is going to be a really interesting race throughout the season, and there's a lot of amazing defenders to look out for. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back soon, but until then, take care.